Namaste. So this video takes up where the last video left off. If you haven't watched it, go back and see it now because this one won't make a whole lot of sense <laughs> without having seen that one. And then there's another caveat here that we went over some time ago before starting the Atma Bodha series, what are the qualifications for one to realize this knowledge? So we're going to talk about specific meditation techniques here. If you're not qualified, you will not be able to get the result. Don't blame the technique. Don't blame the teacher. It's you. So, that having been said, let's take up from where we left off in the previous video. Shalavatya asked, What is the goal of this world? Pravahana Jayavali answered, Space, for all things certainly originate from space, and they merge by moving towards space. For space is certainly greater than all these. Space is their ultimate goal. This is the highest and best Udgita. This is endless. One who, knowing this, meditates upon the highest and best Udgita, to him comes the highest and best, and he wins the highest and best region. So this is deep. And it uses an unfamiliar term, Udgita. Now, we got a whole bunch of comments on the last video. And I deleted a bunch of them because they were basically nonsense. But not one of them inquired about the meaning of Udgita. That means you're not paying attention, people. If I drop an undefined term into the discussion. It's up to you to inquire to clear it. That's how you learn things. Especially, that's how you learn things to be able to apply them. And if you don't know the meaning of the terms, how can you apply anything? Duh. See, this is all a symptom of Neo-Advaita. Neo-Advaita is simply mouthing the words that talk about non-duality like a parrot, you know, or like a tape recorder, just playing back something you heard from somebody you thought was cool. No, we don't accept that. And we know exactly who and when they do it because it doesn't make any sense in terms of the understanding of non-duality given in the scriptures. The scriptures are the gold standard. You should follow the terminology and logic of the scriptures. Otherwise, you're going to get it wrong. So, <laughs> another caveat, right? But, Udgita, huh? the highest and best Udgita. Now, first of all, Udgita has several definitions. And one of them is the hymns of the Samaveda, sung in a great sacrifice by the Udgatra priest. So these hymns are the essence of the essence of the essence of the Vedas. And being sung by the Udgatra priest means that he is delivering this essence of the essence to the people present. And so the highest and best Udgita that we should meditate upon is another definition of Udgita, which is Aum. All authentic Vedic mantras begin and end with Aum. So if you hear someone chanting some mantra and they don't begin with Aum, it's not Vedic. 
It's mental speculation. And so then, what is the best? Space. To chant Aum, or a mantra beginning with Aum, such as Aum Namah Shivaya, and meditate on space. This is the highest and best. Udgita. Ud means ultimate. Gita means song. So the ultimate song, the ultimate mantra, the ultimate meditation is meditation on space. Now, I'm going to give you a meditation technique. And then I'm going to justify it by excerpts from various scriptures. So the technique is, you conceive of a space, not the ordinary space full of stars and galaxies and stuff, but truly empty space, blank space. And this space extends to infinity. Now, the space that we know through science and that we observe through telescopes and something doesn't extend to infinity. It's limited by what's called the light cone. And the light cone is the distance that light can travel since the beginning of the universe. Now, the scientists and the Vedas disagree on when that was. <laughs> but basically, it was several billion years ago. So all we can see when we look through a telescope is that part of the creation which is revealed to us by the light that has been emitted since the beginning. That is a finite universe. That is not infinite. So what is the infinite, actually? What is infinite space? What is the experience of the infinite? Sanat Kumara said, that which is infinite is bliss. There is no bliss in what is finite. The infinite alone is bliss. Thus, the infinite itself should be sought to be understood. Bhuman, the infinite, has surely to be inquired into. Narada said, O venerable sir, I hanker to understand the infinite. Sanat Kumara said, that is the infinite in which one does not see anything else, does not hear anything else, does not know anything else. And that is limited where one sees something else. That which is infinite is immortal. That which is finite is mortal. So here we have the definition of the infinite. Infinite space is that within which we do not see anything. There's nothing there. And guess what? We all experience this infinite space every night during deep sleep. Sushupti consciousness. Therefore, the infinite space is already there in the heart, not out there through the senses. But within. This infinite space is so big that the finite creation could be stuck over in a corner somewhere and you would never even know it's there. Truly unlimited infinite space is so vast that even the great creation with all its billions of galaxies would be lost in it insignificant, like a speck of dust. This is really the infinite. And this is what we should meditate on when we endeavor to reach the highest and best goal. This entire universe is nothing but the niralamba, the reality which exists without any support. 
Further, it shines, being illumined by the Niralamba. The yogi, with his mind turned inward, merges with this whole one by making every object in this world one with it. Know this. If any person does not meditate on this great all-pervading void, which is the space of consciousness, chidakasha, he will be a samsari, a worldly individual, forever in bondage to worldly attachments, like the silkworm in its self-made cocoon. Understand this. All living beings of whatever genus undergo great misery over and over again. Hear from me. In order to avert all this suffering and sorrow, meditate on the great void constantly without any break. This is Lord Shiva. If anybody would know about infinite space, it would be him. <laughs> Lord Shiva is famous for going into samadhi for thousands of years at a time. Lord Shiva is the one who knows. We do not know. That is our defect. So, therefore, one should endeavor to understand and experience this infinite space where there is nothing whatsoever to be seen or heard, nothing to be felt, nothing to be known. Monks, I will teach you the unconditioned and the path that leads to the unconditioned. Listen, and what is the unconditioned? The ending of greed, hate, and delusion. This is called the unconditioned. And what is the path that leads to the unconditioned? This is called the path that leads to the unconditioned. Immersion with placing the mind and keeping it connected. Immersion without placing the mind, but just keeping it connected. Immersion without placing the mind or keeping it connected. Emptiness inversion. Emptiness immersion. Signless immersion, undirected immersion. So what is this immersion that Buddha speaks of? It means you are completely immersed, you are completely surrounded, completely embedded in the space of the meditation. The unconditioned is the same thing that Shiva was talking about in the previous verse, the infinite, that which is boundless, empty, inconceivable, unspeakable, unrelated to anything, free from duality, free from cause and effect, free from subject and object or any form of duality. This is Brahman. And Brahman is experienced first as nothingness, empty space, the void. Oh, and Buddha has more advice for us. The thought occurred to me, what if, with the complete transcending of perceptions of form, with the disappearance of perceptions of resistance, and not heeding perceptions of diversity, thinking infinite space, I were to enter and remain in the dimension of the infinitude of space. But my heart didn't leap up at the dimension of the infinitude of space, didn't grow confident, steadfast, or firm, seeing it as peace. So at a later time, having seen the drawback of forms, I pursued that theme. Having understood the reward of the dimension of the infinitude of space, I familiarized myself with it. My heart leaped up at the dimension of the infinitude of space, grew confident, steadfast, and firm, seeing it as peace. With the complete transcending of perceptions of form, with the disappearance of perceptions of resistance, and not heeding perceptions of diversity, 
perceiving infinite space, I entered and remained in the dimension of the infinitude of space. So this is the Buddha telling us how to do it. How do you do it? You let go of all forms. You let go of all conceptions of resistance. Space is frictionless. It gives no resistance. So especially if there are no forms, there's no gravity, there's no radiation, no light, just complete, blank, empty space. Now, once you become familiar with this, you will see it as peace. You will see it as the greatest refuge, the greatest protection. Because now I've waited until nearly the end of the video to explain all this. The value of this meditation is that not only at night do we go into sushupti, but at the time of death, we also merge into sushupti. I could quote more verses, but it's not really necessary at this point. One merges the mind, intelligence, consciousness, and bodily organs into sushupti, into emptiness, into space. That was given in the first quote. So then what happens? Sushupti is not just emptiness, neither is empty space. Rather, it is the most powerful space of creative energy, what's called zero-point energy which is basically infinite. So, if one is confident and reassured and enters this space, one can create anything. This is what happens at night. We have our thoughts and ideas during the day. Then we have our dreams at night, trying to digest these impressions then whatever is remaining in the mind, we bring with us into sushupti, and then we create what's going to happen in the next day, what's going to happen in our dreams after coming out of sushupti, and so on. And at the time of death, we bring with us the accumulated impressions of the entire life. And so this becomes the seed of the next birth. This is why one should become familiar with empty space. One should become comfortable in sushupti. Enter it with awareness. This is deep meditation. This is samadhi. This is enlightenment. And one more thing, huh? Like Steve Jobs. One more thing. This is the big one. When you're in this empty space, sooner or later, something will happen. A great light will dawn. You won't be able to stop it. It will fill the entire space with consciousness. Your consciousness because you are the self. Unlimited space filled with unlimited consciousness. The light that permeates and penetrates everywhere, everything. This is Brahman. This is the complete enlightenment. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung Aung Namah Shivaya